Hey guys, Silver Ghost here, and today we're going to be looking at the KWA LM4. Now, the LM4 I have here is the PTR uh, version uh, with the rail system on the front here. Now, this KWA airsoft gun is constructed of full metal, so everything you see besides for the, the grip right here and the stock, which everything else is metal. These are like a hard, like a polymer um, plastic. It's high quality though. Uh, so far, I don't have any scratches on it simply because I do take care of it, but I have dropped it a couple of times and uh, hit some walls with it, <laughs> just simply because the gun is pretty heavy and it's pretty big if you're trying to clear rooms with it in airsoft. Now, that said, the, the stock is retractable. I can make it smaller, make it bigger. Uh, this is my this slot right here. This is where I'm comfortable at. Uh, now the gun is pretty heavy since it is constructed of full metal uh, So I do recommend buying like one of these um, Front grips right here just to help distribute the weight while you're shooting uh, The one I bought right here is a Magpul Mo MOE. Uh, it fits onto the Rail system right here. Now this gun is actually really sweet because everything's true to spec so if you want to replace anything with uh, any real world parts except you know, of course, for the firing pin, you don't want to do that with this gun. Uh, everything else, like accessories, you can actually use real steel parts uh, in terms of like the grip, the scope. You can even change the scope out. And some people actually change the grip here for a pistol grip uh, simply because they want it more comfortable. Uh, so far, I don't really have any issues with it. The quality is pretty good. Like this, this like polymer is really like solid. And I kind of like the feel of the grip, like the original one. But, you know, to each their own, some people want to change it out. Now, the barrel itself is also made out of metal, uh, which is great. Uh, I did notice that the metal uh, gets a little easy, it is a little easy to scratch, uh, like the paint. The paint itself isn't the best, uh, but, you know, once you take it out a couple of times, it does look pretty cool when it has like a few minor scratches. But this is the gun up close, as you can see. So it's very high quality. Um, they machined everything out as you can see so it's actually got the rail system on each you know you got your top side and the bottom and then you also got the rail system for the scopes and stuff like that as you can see this is a very well constructed airsoft gun now yes it is very nice but it does come in a price tag if you're looking to buy it online you're probably going to be paying around $360 for it if you're going to buy it at a store the upsell might be around $380 to maybe $400. It really depends which store you go to. Some people don't do the upsell, they just do the lowest marked price. Uh, but my best advice is to probably get it online simply because you get a better deal. And um, I actually got this, this particular one on evike.com. Uh, they actually gave a pretty good deal for it. When you buy something over $120 or something dollars, you do get free shipping and also I actually picked up these green gas, uh, green gas canisters uh, because I got like a, a coupon for $30 after I spent this much money. These were free. I got three of them for free, which was really great because I think they go for like 20 bucks if you buy it, uh, a pack of free or more than that. Um, anyways, that and yes, this green gas is pretty high quality. I'll probably recommend this if you're going to use it with this gun. Um, now, like I said, everything's true to spec, so you could like <clears throat> change out some parts, like the the front guard right here. Some people like putting like a like a polymer uh, hand guard here to kind of reduce the weight of the gun. I could see why they would want to do that, but I kind of like the feel of it. For me, it feels nice in my hands once when I'm playing with uh, friends and stuff like that. Um, it's just an overall great gun. Can see here. Now um, the hop up adjustment. Let's move around here. Now the hop up adjustment is a little bit finicky, so I do recommend uh, being very careful with it. I did read reviews before I bought it that some people actually broke their hop up adjustment uh, part inside the gun. Now we're going to show you right here. So the hop up adjustment is inside here. inside here and um they gave you this they actually give you like this little this little tool right here that i kind of wish they they changed it a little bit but 
I mean, I've adjusted the hop up. I haven't broken it yet, but this is the tool that they give you. Let me try to focus in here. But yeah, so this little tool right here, and you actually what you do, you you put the little tool in here and uh, adjust the hop up as needed. Now it does come with manual. The manual does explain how to do it, how to adjust where, how you, which way you want to adjust the hop up, depending on how much hop you need. Um, but honestly, I probably would not change anything straight out of the box. Like the hop up is fine. I did not need to change it. I changed it just to try it out, but I ended up putting it back where it was initially. Now straight at the back, as you can see, like I said, everything is full metal. So even this part right here is made out of metal, which is really nice because when you pay this much money for a gun, you want to have good quality. And trust me, anybody spending this much money on a gun wants to have like some kind of metal construction, uh, well-made, which will last a couple of years if you take, take good care of it. <clears throat> So as you can see here, when I pull the charging handle, this pulls back right here. There you go. And also this dust cover right here does close and open back up when you pull it. Now, just looking up here, you got your magazine release button right here. So let's put the magazine in here. Release it. And also let's look at this side right here. So we have our safety our uh, semi, and then we have the full. So full, semi, safety. Now the thing with the adjustment, um, the safety selector, selector switch, you will not be able to put it on safe unless you charge the weapon. Uh, I'll demonstrate this right here. So I'm gonna put it on semi, pull the trigger. Now it's not engaged. So this is not engaged. So when I try to put it on safe, it won't let me. What you actually have to do is pull it once, then you'll be, there, you'll be able to put it on the safety option. Now also another cool feature here is just like the real gun, when you run out of ammo, the bolt actually goes back right here. And um, put this right here. So once you put the new magazine in, Right, it's empty. So once you put it back in, you'll hit this bolt release right here. And this actually will release the bolt back in and that'll charge it for the next round. So they actually put the round, uh, a new BB into the chamber and then you'll be good to go. So you don't actually have to go, oh, reload my magazine and then you have to charge it. No, once you release the magazine, you put the new magazine in, bolt release, and then you're, you're ready to fire the gun. Now, there are a couple of things with this. Um, simply the weight, I would recommend getting like a like a, a sling for it, uh, simply because it is a bit heavy and your arms might get a little tired after a couple of hours playing airsoft. Now, this gun is a sweet gun. I highly recommend it so far. It comes well made. And, you know, for me, the full metal construction is always something I look for when I'm buying an airsoft gun. And, you know, everything's just well made. This gun actually surprisingly operates really well in cold temperatures. I took it out and it was pretty freezing and it was still working. Uh, a little later on to the day though, when it, the sun started to go down, it got a lot, lot colder. And then that's when the performance went down a lot. Uh, that's when I noticed that, yeah, the gas now isn't working too good. But I've been with my experience with other gas blowbacks and other kind of gas guns. Uh, this one actually works really well and KWA did a great job with making sure that the gas doesn't get too cold in the magazine. I'm assuming they put some kind of like a, like an insulation around here just so it doesn't get too cold when you shoot it. Uh, other than that, like they've done a great job with this one. And I'm, I'm really pleased with the purchase so far. As you can see here. Now something with the gas blowback guns and airsoft and uh, other stuff, you do want to uh, take good care of these guns each time you go out and play or you just take it out to test it, shoot it. You do want to take good care of it and make sure the important parts are lubricated. And like it with the KWA uh, 4, that's actually pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to just put the stock in right now just to make it a little smaller. Now 
you know, it's very easy to actually make sure everything's working. So first of all, I do want to check it, make sure it's clear. So I want to make sure there's nothing in the chamber. Okay, it is clear. So now I'm going to press this pin right here above the safety selector. You just push that pin in. This, uh, once you push that in, turn the gun around. And now that pin should be sticking out right here, which it is. You just yank it. Now once you pull it and it's clear, what you want to do is just kind of pull the gun. Ah, there you go. So this airsoft gun actually breaks like the real gun, which is a uh, pretty sweet, like they've actually kept it, you know, pretty true to spec and they've tried to make it function just like the real gun, which is really great, especially when you spend this much money on the gun. So now as you can see, you can actually see the internals. You've got the trigger mechanism here, the bolt release, the magazine release, um, you got your bolt right there. You got your bolt, the valve, uh, the, the BB feeder right there. So the parts that you do want to uh, maintain when you get this gun. Uh, now, mind you, straight out the box, everything is already pre-lubed. Uh, but I would check it just to make sure I didn't like get dry or anything like that. But it shouldn't be. It should be already pre-lubed and all set. Uh, but right here, this is where you want to put the lube on the trigger mechanism. Make sure everything's... Um, you know, nice and lubricated. And uh, the other part that you do want to make sure that is lubricated is inside here. And I'm going to show you right now. So what you actually do, you actually pull this charging handle back. And once you pull it out, it actually comes out with uh, everything right here. So this is the charging handle. You could lube this if you want. You just, if you don't want to like have it like scratch the inside of the gun and make sure it operates nicely when you charge it. Uh, but the most important part, I'm going to put the gun right down right now. Put it down real quick. So the part that's important to lubricate is this part right here. Um, this is like part of the system. I'm oh, sorry. This part right here, this is like a valve right here. This is where the gas goes in. The other part that you do want to lubricate is here. You see where that spring is? You want to lubricate in there that's where the ring is where the seal so this is how it seals the air and make sure that you're pushing all the bb out um, with a strong amount of force now you do want to be careful not to over lube it uh, when you over lube it what happens is is it attracts dirt you know sand just stuff that you don't want in the gun that could harm your performance you know, they actually say a little lube is a lot of lube, right? Um, so you do want to be careful not overdoing it. Uh, you don't want to just like spray silicone. Now, the other thing is don't use like any kind of cheap oil. Okay, you want to use pure 100% silicone oil simply because you don't want to damage anything. Uh, the one part that I wouldn't put any kind of oil is in here. Don't do that. You know, you don't want to affect that. But you do want to put the oil right here on this valve right here. And you want to put a little oil right there. Uh, once you do that, it should be nice and smooth, as you can hear. So it's not like, it doesn't sound bad. It, it sounds real smooth when you pull it. Now, you do want to wear gloves when you do this. Your hands are going to get pretty messy. I'm um, just going to wipe this real quick. So once you're ready to put everything back, you want to just wipe your hands. You don't want to get all over the gun because then that would be kind of terrible. All right. All right. So once you grab everything, you grab the gun, put this bad boy back together. All right. So once you put the the bolt carrier back and you put the charging handle. You do want to put it like this though, this is how it goes back. This goes on the front here, and then this hooks on here. This is the charging handle. When you pull it back, it pulls the whole thing back and then it goes like that, okay? So what you want to do, you want to put it in at one time, at the same time. All right, so now it's in there. You wipe your hands real quick. Get like one of these microfiber cloths, real cheap. You know, you can get them on Amazon for like a whole pack of like 50 for like 20 bucks. You know, you can't go wrong with that. 
So you get one of these oil rags right here. As you can see it's just full of oil. Now once the charging handle's back and you got the bolt in here too, as you can see, everything's back to normal. Once you put the gun back down, oh, and here's another thing actually I forgot to mention. Now you can adjust the hop up from entering here. But a lot of people actually recommend taking out the charging handle and the bolt and actually changing the hop up from this side but being able to put your finger in because you, you don't want to put your finger in while, while this thing's charged. Trust me, it's made out of full metal and the string is really strong and you don't want to mess up your fingers. So what I do recommend is actually when you want to change the hop up, break the gun down like I did, <clears throat> take out the bolt, take out the charging handle and then adjust your hop up as needed like that. That's probably the safest way to do it for your fingers and for the hop up just so you don't break it trying to trying to put it in there and like long story short you don't want to damage your hop up or your fingers. So once, so once the bolt and the charging handle are back in though you just want to put this back now just like that. Once it's in and it's secure and you're sure put the pin in you just press that pin in just like that. Now you wipe your hands real quick, wipe the gun down, give it a quick rub down, boom, boom, boom. All right, now you do want to test, make sure that you put it back the right way. So what you want to do is just charge it once. There you go. So it sounds pretty good. It sounds like it's functioning. There you go. And that's how you uh, do the breakdown, do a quick maintenance check or change the hop up as needed. And like I said, you do want to test it every time you do break the gun down and you put it back together. Just make sure that it works the way it should be. So you just pull it a little couple times, make sure it functions. And you can hear that clicking sound. It means it's uh, it's locking the mechanism right there. So let it quick run down. There you go.